Hello everybody, I'm Gary Massa with Massa Associates here at Pacific Sotheby's International Realty and I'm here again with my main man Tommy Hinton with Investors 1031 Exchange. I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're seeing in the marketplace right now with many investors who are owning uh, you know, rental properties, what they're doing with those investments and, and where it's going on to and, and Tommy has some great opportunities uh, to help people continue to build wealth. So. Um, to really start with, as we were talking about earlier, I have a lot of clients right now that bought properties between like 2008, 2012, 13, when the market was really down, they bought some, uh, you know, bought some great homes at great prices, experienced a lot of appreciation, uh, rents went up, so those monthly, you know, dividends and the rents that they're collecting went up, and it's been a great opportunity, but a lot of people now, maybe it was their first rental property, or they've acquired quite a few, and there's a lot of hassles that come along with owning you know, investment properties like dealing with tenants, the turnover, uh, repairs, maintenance, and sometimes uh, you know, the tenants are trashing the property, is kind of devaluing it, and unless you're there to put continually put money into it, um, it, it kind of becomes a burden for it. So with a lot of people right now asking what to do next with their money, what to do next with the investments, and in our previous video you had talked about a couple of different investment vehicles that might offer some great solutions to continue to grow the wealth and uh, have an investment that's a little bit more hands-off still making uh, great returns. So um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, those couple of those investments that we are talking about on a, sure. on a higher level? Yeah. Yeah, so um, you know what we're seeing is again the baby boomers uh, have accumulated a lot of, of real estate, and not even just the baby boomers. You know, because of the the recession, a lot of guys have picked up stuff that's appreciated, like you said, um, and so they don't want to sell it because of the taxes. And so right. the first thing we talk about is the 1031 exchange. Let's sell it, not pay any taxes. Um, but then they come back and they say, okay, but then I have to reinvest in another piece of real estate. You know, this is a headache, but at least I'm comfortable with this headache. I don't right. want a new headache. And so what we show them are the two uh, vehicles that you can 1031 exchange into are a Delaware statutory trust okay. and what we call a tenant in common. They're abbreviated as a DST and a TIC. Okay. Uh, but what these are, these are large pieces of real estate that you can buy fractional ownership interest in okay. uh, through the 1031 exchange process. Most of them are about $100,000 minimum investments. So, you know, you could sell a property for you know, five hundred thousand dollars. You could actually go out and buy five different pieces of real estate where you own a small fractional ownership interest. But there's a company that does the debt, does the due diligence, pays right. the taxes, does all the work for you. You're just collecting Manages rent, the entire asset. right? You know, and it's just okay. you know we call it the three T's. People are tired of tenants, toilets, and trash. That's and right. And so what we do is we show them these tools. Uh, they just get checks just like they would if they own the real estate themselves. They're not worried about occupancy okay. or taxes or any of that. It just comes straight to their account each month. And, and typically those leases and those programs are a, a little bit longer term, right? It's not like a one year lease. It's like a three to five and maybe sometimes a little bit longer, right? Correct. Yeah. You know, with the multifamily, um, you know, those are the one year leases. But with most commercial real estate, you know, you're at a, a, about a five year, three to five year lease, uh, which makes it a little bit better. But that's not even a concern for you as the investor. The sponsor is handling all of that. Um, what you're gonna really look at is how long they'll hold the property. Right. And most of these guys will hold them three to 10 years. And so you're making the income, your principal's still there. You're not gonna ever lose the principal, at least hopefully. Right. And then um, you 1031 exchange that whenever they're going to sell the property and you continue on, again, building more and more wealth. Right, exactly. So that was my next question was going to be how do these investment uh, vehicles help to continue to build wealth for the investors over time? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I, I tell people all the time that the 1031 exchange is not a way to avoid taxes. Right. It's a way to build wealth and keep the money in your family. You know, there's the worst charity out there, the IRS. Right. You don't want to give money away that you don't need to give money away right. to. Um, and so, you know, when we, we look at this, you continue to trade throughout your life. You know, you buy that first rental property, you trade up, you know, you continue to spread it out, diversify. Right. Um, but overall, you're continuing to grow that real estate. And then when you pass away, um, your tax liability passes away with you. There's a full step up in basis. Uh, your heirs will pay no taxes on the real estate that they've inherited from you. Right. And again, it's like, it, it's about growing that nest egg because you're 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 keeping your purchasing power and growing your purchasing power without having to you know pay tax on it every step along the way if you want to buy a different property here or there and then essentially that you know accumulation of the deferred taxes passes along with you do creating a great legacy and opportunity for your heirs and your family later on a hundred percent you know people don't realize that capital gains taxes can be as high as 40 percent wow so you're selling a million you make a million dollars on a property 
you're going to give away four hundred thousand dollars of that, um, only allowing you to, to move on six hundred thousand. Right. By using the tender and exchange and using these investment tools, you're going to keep all million dollars and continue to buy more, which not only creates more monthly income, but it keeps your wealth with you and not giving it away where you get no right. return on it. Keeps that working for you as opposed Correct. to just losing it and, and paying into the IRS. Correct. Okay, yes. awesome. These are really exciting tools, uh, Tommy, and I, I'm sure it's going to benefit a lot of people. I appreciate the information. I hope you guys got some value out of that as well. Again, if you do have any questions about how this may benefit your specific situation, please don't hesitate to call me directly or Tommy directly, or you can visit his website at investors1031.com. Is got that right? It. That's got it. I got it. All Thanks, right. Tommy. All right. Talk to you soon. Tips.